Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our final lesson in the Transfiguration by Andreopoulos. We're going to take a look at pages 226 to 243, and this begin with block one and take a look at the theology behind the Hesychia mandrela. Remember, the mandrela is that circle of light that uh, is always around uh, the head of Jesus. But in the Transfiguration, it's a larger circle. And uh, it was round or oval or with rays or without rays. It enclosed Moses and Elijah with Christ, or it did not enclose Moses and Elijah with Christ. In other words, there were variations in iconography. Now, block one, note two, by the 6th century, there was a generally accepted iconography, iconography for the Transfiguration. But in the 14th century, there was a major transition. The Hesychia Mandrela emerged. So, what was this Hesychia Mandrela? It was a large circle that enclosed two concave squares each one superimposed on the other. And it had an underlying meaning. It had an underlying theological meaning of depicting Christ as the son of justice. And I'll add to that, it also had the underlying meaning of the circle representing the Father that enclosed the Son and the Holy Spirit. So it had a meaning of Trinity as well. It emerged out of the Macedonian school of iconography. The Macedonian school. The two squares formed an octagon, and that represented the eight days prior to the transfiguration. But it also represented the Trinity. The circle is the Father. The two squares represent the Son and the Holy Spirit. Because we know from the Gospel of John, the Son is in the Father, John 14.10. So it's a, it becomes Trinitarian theology. Transfiguration in the 14th century is understood in a triune theology way. And the mandrela expresses that triune theology. And uh, the eight points that make up that octagon, remember the uh, feast that's celebrated here is the Feast of Tabernacles, and that eighth day was the eighth day of the uh, enthronement of the Messiah. And so that tied in as well. But it all got reflected in the iconography, because remember, why was iconography so important for the Transfiguration? Because it is the best way to express a theology that is beyond concept. This artistic way of expressing theology in the Transfiguration was actually preferred because to understand the glory of God, that is something beyond concept. It is beyond propositional truth. It is experiential, and it's best depicted in iconography. So let's go to block two and take a look at uh, why Hesychia theology in the 14th century became so important. Now, block two, note one, the Hesychia mandrela was very similar to uh, cartography, map making. Cosmology was theological, and Jerusalem was always pictured in the center of the world. The earth was considered flat, the sky was considered round. And the tabernacle of Moses was considered a model for the entire creation. The tabernacle of Moses. Maps took the shape of a compass rosetta. And that compass rosetta looked very similar to a Hesychia mandrela and the transfiguration icon. And so these, uh, these maps, which were symbolic maps, okay? Not a map like we think of today. These were symbolic maps. They were a rosette or a, a compass rosette. And uh, they depicted 
four directions, four seasons, four material elements, and the three continents of Europe, Asia, and Africa. And these maps, these symbolic maps, adorned the floors of many of the churches. So it was all about uh, not a map in the way that we think of it today. These are symbolic maps, symbolic representations of the world. Sim, uh, the best way to say it, symbolic artistic cosmology. Symbolic artistic cosmology. It was in the shape of a rosette compass. But what was unique about it is that uh, this cartography emerged about the same time as the Hesekia Mandala. They emerged around the same time. And uh, it was a symbolic representation of the creation. Four directions, four seasons, four material elements, and the three continents of Europe, Asia, and Africa. So let's move on to block three and take a look at the sacred representation of the creation in the Transfiguration. Heaven was seen as a series of six circles. The mandala, therefore, became a symbol for heaven. Remember, the cloud of glory descends out of heaven onto Moses, Elijah, and Christ. So it's uh, the cloud of glory descends on the new Exodus transfiguration, just as the cloud of glory descended on the Mount Sinai in the first Exodus. So heaven was... The mandala was a symbol for heaven. Christ opened heaven for the apostles. Remember, Christ talking to Nathaniel. You will see heaven opened and the angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The glory of Christ encloses all of heaven and all of earth. And 3.5, this is the manifestation of the uncreated light of the divinity of Christ. The glory of God becomes the object of revelation here. The glory of God becomes the actual object of revelation. And the transfiguration mandala becomes identified with Hesekiah theology. The, uh, and let me explain that last statement. The transfiguration mandala is identified with Hesekiah theology. What does that mean? Well, Hesekiah is what? contemplative, meditative inner stillness in prayer. So what is being said here is that the glory of God in the transfiguration confers transformation upon the disciples. Transfiguration confers transformation upon the apostles, Peter, James, and John. So that's a way to understand 3.7. The Transfiguration Mandala is identified with Hesekia theology because Christ confers transformation, spiritual transformation, upon Peter, James, and John. This is a picture of the conferring of illumination, of the illuminating revelation of the glory of God is conferred upon Peter, James, and John. And that's what you have to take away from this lesson. That summary statement is the key to the closing of this study. When we look at the icon of transfiguration, which is an expression of a theology which is beyond concept, which is the expression of a theology which is beyond propositional statements, we see the conferring of Doxa glory on the apostles by a transfigured Jesus Christ. The glory of God confers glory on those who are abiding in him as he abides in them. That's the key to take away from this. In the 14th century, the Hesekia Mandala emerged at the same time 
a symbolic map of the world emerged that looked a lot like that Hesekiah mandala. And they even had it uh, as a mosaic on many of the floors in the churches, this symbolic map that included uh, Europe, Asia, and Africa. That was considered the whole world, Europe, Asia, and Africa. And uh, it emerged the same time that, uh, and it looked like a rosette, a rosetta compass. It was a symbolic map, completely symbolic. And at the same time, the transfiguration icon was gaining new symbolism. Because now we're supposed to view it as the conferring of doxa glory upon the apostles. It's transfig transfiguration conferring transformation. It's transfiguration conferring being born again from above. The transfiguration icon is a picture of being born from above. So beautiful final lesson, superb final lesson. And that's going to wrap up our study. That wraps up pages 226 to 243. And we will discuss our next study in our next meeting.